Hello everyone, in this video I'm going to talk about this high vis deer hair caddis and I'm going to talk how to mount those wings uh, in high vis option and why I like it like this and by the end of the video I will explain why I'm using two colors and not just a yellow wing. So without any further ado, let's hop into those materials and then into tying. So for the hook I'm going to use the MCO 900 bl uh, one of my favorite hooks because it's pure classic. It's a very good quality and it's sharp reliable So nothing to, to complain about uh, for uh, tag or Accept or hotspot call it whatever you like. I'm going to use orange ice dub by Royal CC uh, You can use of, of course whatever you want even black dubbing if you want if you want to be more exact and to imitate uh, egg sac for example for stone flies uh, they have black egg sac uh, sometimes for the body I'm going to use mole fur which as you can see I fluffed up a little bit in a coffee grinder uh, which is very convenient if you want to dub more easily uh, because uh, in bags uh, dubbing can mat down and it's more difficult to take exact amount and like when you fluff it up you can take like this very light and small amount and uh, control more uh, when you want to apply your dubbing. Now for the first wing or main wing, call it whatever you want, is All Purpose Deer Hair by Nature Spirit. Uh, you can use elk, cow elk, whatever you have by your hand. Uh, I personally don't like hair that flares too much this is uh, the the most flare i would like in my flies and uh, this one is very nice because it has pretty straight hairs so it's easier to control for the hotspot and i'm going to talk more about it uh, by the end of the video i'm going to use again all-purpose deer hair by nature spirit and but in yellow and i will use relatively small amount so i'm able to see both colors that's the main point here the thread to bond it all is Vivas 8 through 0. For larger hook sizes, you can go even with 6 through 0 because it's easier to cinch down onto the deer hair. Uh, and it's better to, to lock it down with uh, more tight wraps. Now, after I showed you all the materials I need, let's hop nice. into time. Uh, and Vivas thread. I'll start one eye length behind the hook, behind the hook eye, uh, because I need that space later on when I'm when I'm going to finish the fly. So one eye length or so behind the eye, and then I'm gonna work my thread towards the rear end. When I'm pretty near, I'll just cut everything, and I will attach some of the orange dubbing I prepared. Uh, I just need a small ball uh, to make a nice hot spot here. Uh, you can use any color you like, even a black one. Black one will more be like realistic because uh, some flies, I noticed that with stone flies, they have black egg sacs. So it would be pretty much imitating the hatching, hatching fly. Now at this point, this is like, as you can see, a very small uh, sm a small uh, dubbing uh, ball I will uh, make nice and scruffy body and I fluffed up this uh, hair as you could see because it's just easier to work with it's easier to pinch out smaller amounts of dubbing which are required to make nice and tight dubbing noodle uh, obviously you don't need to make tight and thin dubbing noodle you can make it a bit uh, thicker because it's easier to brush out but bear in mind that thinner dubbing noodle is more durable so take that into consideration and with thinner dubbing noodle you have more control meaning that you can make more wraps more layers around the body and create shape and thickness as you like it as opposed to thicker dubbing noodle which you don't have that uh, option because thicker one will make relatively thick body immediately. So if you're not skilled enough at the uh, from the start, just make dubbing, 
thinner dubbing noodle because you will have more room to make a mistake and correct it. Uh, I made nice and even, relatively, like moderately thick dubbing noodle because I want to brush out this body, make nice and tight wraps to keep everything more secure. So I'm making this body and obviously I need a little bit more dubbing. So I'll attach some more hair onto the thread here. As I'm going towards the head, I'll try to make this dubbing a little bit thinner so I can work with your hair a little bit more easier. So I'll literally taper it down to this point. Now I'll just take some Velcro and make this a little bit more scruffy. I don't want to make scruffy the dubbing ball behind, but if you do, it's not a big deal because you can always cut and make everything even again, as I will do now. So it looks like a little bit of velvety, it's lively, it just looks great, this kind of body. Consider it for making nymphs. Now, before I started making a fly, I prepared some deer hair in a stacker, I, li I lined it. Uh, the most important part, a couple of them actually, the most important parts is to remove the tips or the hair in the direction you're going to tie it, like this. And all, always, 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 I cannot emphasize that enough, remove the underfur from the hair because underfur uh, bonds the hair with uh, all those hairs, they have scales and underfur interlocks with those scales and makes it harder to tie in, makes it harder to stack, just makes everything harder. So I'll just decide on the length of the wings and I'm holding the eye of the hook to make everything in position. Transferring the hands, spin the bobbin holder counterclockwise if you look from the above, so the thread will jump into your hands like this. Now, relatively loose wrap, one, and then behind it, another one. Now push back, hold the index finger in position to prevent any spinning around the hook, but also pull the thread upwards, which also prevents, because there is decreased thre thread torque, it also decreases the, thre the spinning around the hook. So I'll just make one wrap, and then one, two, pull those hairs up, although I can do it later, and three, so three wraps. This is more or less locked in position on the top of the hook shank. Now, I prepared yellow hair in a smaller stacker, and I'm going to use it for a uh, high vis on this fly. So I want this hair to be as long or slightly shorter than the hair I just tied. So I'll just align it here. Again, spin the bobbin holder counterclockwise. Keep everything on the top. Now with two reps, one light rep and two reps, just repeat the process you did. So tighten up. Now I'll just pull everything up and go through the butts. One and two and I'll make whip finish. Now, if you remember, I left bare hook shank behind the eye. So I'll just push the thread. I'll push the thread under it as much as I can. And then with whip finish, I'll do the same. Uh, now, for the whip finish, it's important to make it flat so it doesn't furl into itself and break as you tighten it. As you tighten it, so if you can use your hands to whip finish the knot and push the knot into the hair buds to lock them. One, two, three, and tighten towards the bend. And that's it. Tight knot cinch the knot as hard as you can. Now it's time to cut those excess butt ends. And because yellow ones are shorter than the 
natural ones it's going to be easy to remove those long ones but those shorter ones can make some trouble but not so much this time okay I'll just make everything as you can see nice and even I'll take the ni knife uh, I'll throw the inventor of El Caricatus he used a razor blade so he liked it and he liked his hair his head sorry well it wasn't intended it wasn't his intention to be a head but he liked it shorter I like it moderately big so I'll just cut it with blade and it makes nice and perfect little head over here with no hairs running around all hairs are like in one 180 degrees along the body nicely flared not too much flare like in this direction just around the hook shank nice and tight compact head let me show you that looks beautiful everything is on the top a little bit tilted to the side but I can live with that I guess and fish won't mind because as you can see it's nicely hidden so the idea behind yellow over the top of some other natural material or CDC or whatever actually it can be any color it can be white or pink or whatever is that you have two contrasting colors if you have just yellow in some cert in certain conditions you won't be able to see it especially sunset and sunrise when everything is a little bit yellowish and uh, warm in color of course you can use an another color but like we want to have one universal fly more or less uh, so that's why you have two contrasting things in the background I have like whitey shirt so if I just put this piece of wax like this it doesn't pop up so much yeah but if I put this behind then it pops up a little bit more the same idea goes be uh, behind uh, these wings so make them pop so you can just make it even flatter and more wide so it gets more visible so guys I hope you like this video I hope you learned something new uh, if you did please give it a like subscribe and see you next week